Now let's give a brief summary of the things we've seen over the past few videos. And we started by talking about the input function and this is how we obtain input from the user via the keyboard and importantly this returns a string and it takes a single argument which is also a string but that serves as a prompt and as an example of this let's call the input function and as argument we'll say enter your favorite number hitting return now that prompt that string argument is written and then the cursor sits there blinking waiting for our input and let's say 1.414 is what the user enters hitting return well it looks like the user entered a number as far as they're concerned they entered a number but what input returned was a string and we can see that echoed back to us enclosed in single quotes and this led us to the functions that we can use to do explicit type conversion we talked about the int function and this converts its argument to an integer and the companion to that was the float function and it converts its argument to a float importantly when we were dealing with these functions getting input and doing the type conversion we also mentioned that we can nest one function inside another and by that we mean one function can be an argument for another function and Python will always start with the innermost function evaluate that and then pass that value that it returns to the next function when we say one function can be nested inside the other this can actually go on to any level we could have one function and nested inside another and another and another and so on and so as an example of this let's say we'll take the identifier num and we will set that equal to whatever the float function returns and its argument will be whatever this input function returns after we prompt the user with enter your favorite number so hitting return now we see that prompt the user says 1.414 they hit return and what is num now? So we'll just put that on a line by itself in the interactive environment. Hit return and we see it is the float value 1.414. Now I'll recall that input statement. Now running it again we can see the prompt let's say the user enters 2. The user is thinking my favorite number is an integer value of 2 and hitting return the input function will return that as a string float will convert that to a float so if we look at num now it's 2.0 it's not an integer we also discussed the eval function and this evaluates the string argument that it's provided with so for example if it is given the string argument 5 times 10 it simply evaluates that expression and returns the result so we get the integer 50 now let's go back to that input statement and change float to eval so we are saying that we want num to be assigned whatever eval returns and what is it given it's given the string that input returns hitting return we're prompted for our favorite number if we say 1.414 now what is num it's the float value 1.414 and let's recall that one more time let's say this time the user enters the integer value 2 what is num well it's the integer value 2 eval is a very powerful function but at times it provides a bit too much power and it's probably best to avoid it unless it's truly needed.